Hey YouTube, Mark here. I'm cooking tonight and I'm using something that I've, I got back in at Christmas time and it's something that I've just been playing with for a little while and trying to get used to it. <clears throat> and it's something that I've been thinking about getting for a while and in fact if you'd seen my um, my video where I was talking about starting up the Patreon account and stuff like that and I had the different goals in place and this was actually going to be the first goal to achieve if I hit a hundred dollars a month I was going to buy something new for you know videography um, it could be a microphone or lights or something like that or it could have been something for the kitchen and one of the things I had in mind was a sous vide that's right I got a sous vide for Christmas <clears throat> and like I said I just been kind of playing with it and trying to figure it out and in fact This is the unit that I got. Um, my wife gave this to me. And yeah, I've been playing with it. It does a pretty decent job. I'm actually impressed. One of the first things I cooked on here was barbecued pulled pork. Now the thing is, it didn't have actual smoke flavor. I used liquid smoke, not, you know, off of a grill. But it turned out pretty good and I was fairly impressed. But the thing is, a few days later, we went to my in-laws and My brother-in-law got me another sous vide. <laughs> Imagine that. One Christmas, two people got me sous vides. That's awesome. And not only that, uh, they didn't talk to each other, okay? So nobody knew what they were giving other people or anything like that. And then my son got me a container to cook sous vide in. <laughs> Seriously, what are the odds of that? All right, but today what we're going to do, it's a, uh, it's a dilled pot roast, okay? Now this is a slow cooker recipe that I'm modifying to do in the sous vide because I don't want to overcook the beef. Normally when we do this, you cook it on uh, low for like eight hours or something like that. Sometimes it comes out dry, sometimes it comes out all right, but it's always what I think overcooked. Okay, it's almost shredding apart. So, with the sous vide, I shouldn't have that issue. It'll cook up to the uh, medium rare doneness that I want, which is a temperature between, <sighs> depends on who you ask really, but it should be between like 130 and 135, that's about your medium rare. So, that's what I'm gunning for, because tissues break down not only at temperatures, but also for duration. So if you cook it for a very long time without overcooking it, those connective tissues will break down and you'll still have a nice tender piece of meat. So that's what I'm hoping for with this. So let's get into it. It's actually a very simple recipe, but it's gotta stay submerged and cooking for anywhere between 18 and 36 hours. And I'm actually shooting for 24 hours. So let's get into this. Let's put everything in and uh, I'll show you what you need to do. Okay, so what we need to do first is I want to put a bit of water in here. I'm not going to fill it completely up, but I want to get it eh, maybe about that far, and then when I put the meat in, it should raise up a good portion of the way. So let's get some water in here first. Yes, Johnny, the level 20 gauntlets. All right, but here's what we need to do. First of all, we need to season the meat. So, decent amount of salt on there. Now, I don't have to worry about using salt because Jen's not eating with us when we're having this tomorrow night. So, I can salt it. Some black pepper. and some dill. Okay, just gonna press that down, flip it over, and repeat. 
Now the problem is, is I just got that all over so I'm going to quickly wash my hands. Okay, clean gloves again. A little salt. A little black pepper. This is a one gallon zip top bag. I am going to place the meat in this. Looks pretty good. All right, and then into the bag, I've got some liquids. I got a quarter cup of water. I'll leave that propped right there. All right, then I'm going to do one tablespoon of sherry vinegar. Now, what I want to do. Take these gloves off. I'm going to put this in the water and let that uh, let that water pressure drive out all the air out of the bag. So you just kind of just push it down. Try not to uh, sink it into the uh, water, but. go. That is virtually vacuum packed and that's what we need. So I'm just going to tuck that in there. Doesn't matter which way I do it. When I put this in there, you see I got a max and a low. Or this is minimum. Mini. So I need to have the water level somewhere between there. I'm going to try to get it as close to the max as possible. So, just clip it on the back. My max line is way up here. My water is way down there. So, I am going to get a pitcher and pour more water in. All right, I'm going to say that's close enough. I'm probably down by maybe half an inch. So, going to kind of lip the end of the bag over, just like that. And then I'm going to take the tight sitting, the tight fitting lid, and I actually had to do some modification to this cut because this unit wasn't designed for this lid. Put it over, and I'm going to pinch that bag in between the uh, edge of the container and inside the lid. All right, so that's fully sealed. I can now plug this in. It's going to turn on. Okay, now right now I have it set for 163.5. That's because that was the last thing I cooked on here and I don't want it that high. My current temperature in here is the 109.9 because I put hot water in there. So I'm going to wield my temperature setting down to a 135 and that's where I'm going to start it. Now I could have a timer on here but I'm starting this at 6 o'clock at night according to my little clock over here so by the time we have dinner tomorrow it should be ready so I'm just going to start it up and let it go.
Okay guys, it is the next day and the uh, sous vide is still going. I don't have it on the counter anymore. I actually moved it uh, over there by the window. Um, still set at 135 degrees, still going. It's been, gosh, was it like 18 hours now? So it's probably done technically, but I wanted to keep going and keep breaking down those connective tissues. But what I want to have with dinner tonight, I'm going to roast off some vegetables here. So I've got a few carrots here, a couple of sweet potatoes, some red potatoes, and an onion. What I'm going to do is I want to chop all those up into decent bite-sized pieces. I don't want them really small. Okay, I, I like to have a bite when I take uh, some roasted vegetables. I don't want them really dinky small. So I'm going to just give them a good big rough chop. Coat them with a little bit of oil, season them, salt, pepper, whatever you want to do. Uh, I think I have some uh, Old Bay seasoning. I'm going to use some of that on it as well. And just toss it in that oil with that seasoning. Lay it on a baking sheet and bake it at uh, 450 for, well, until they're done, okay? <laughs> Probably be about, yeah, 20 minutes or so. So, yeah, let's get into that. All right, this is just to show that we are still at 135 degrees. Again, that's my set point here, and that's the actual temperature. So it's one-tenth of a degree below what it's actually set at. And on this unit, I've noticed that that is the norm. Okay, and the thing is, is I can't adjust it by a tenth of a degree. It only goes by half degrees. So, yeah, that's just the way it is. But open it up here. Take a look inside. Meat is still in the bag. Water is still circulating around. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. It's getting done. All right, let's get into these vegetables. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel up my carrots. Technically, you don't have to peel the carrot. The uh, skin layer is actually so thin. If you took a, a green um, scrubby and uh, rub it all over the carrot, technically you'd peel it. I'm also going to peel my sweet potatoes. Okay, now like I said, I want some good sized chunks, so I'm not actually going to have it or anything like that. I'm just going to basically get a nice, maybe half inch, quarter inch slice. Now the sweet potato I'll probably quarter. Cut it in half one way, cut it in half the other way. And then just chop these up. Yeah, just like that. Nice big chunks. The onion, I think I'm just going to leave it as a as a chop. I don't think I'm going to slice it. I could if I wanted to. So, there's all of our veggies. Maybe a tablespoon or two of oil. Just enough to coat everything. Uh, 
There, everything's nice and shiny with oil. All right, so I'm just going to take a little salt. So, this here, this here is a uh, what we call New Bay, and it's like a low sodium version of Old Bay. Something my wife found online. I can't tell you exactly what's in it right now. I'd have to look it up. Put a couple of pinches of that in there as well. Then we'll just give everything a quick toss. Just like that. There, everything's all coated. So we'll dump it out under the into a sheet pan here. And we're going to spread it out. Try to get it in a single layer. It's probably a little crowded, but you know what? That's going to be good enough. All right, so that's it. So I got the meat cooking in the sous vide. I got the vegetables prepped and ready to go. All I gotta do is throw those in the oven, 400 degrees for, well, until I feel they're done. All right, so I've got nothing left to do except to wait. <laughs> but uh, I'm thinking I need something else. I just don't know what. Maybe some dinner rolls. Nothing fancy. And then I think I'll just do some uh, Pillsbury, you know, bake off type stuff. Yeah, that'll make a good round meal. Vegetables, meat, bread. Sounds good to me. <laughs> okay, time to start uh, this final process of dinner. And I want to start the oven up and get it up to temperature, get it up to 400. So we're going to need to set our oven to 400 degrees. And uh, yeah, once that gets warmed up, we'll throw the veggies in. Okay, oven's up to temperature, so let's get these vegetables in. And we'll set the timer for 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, we'll just check them to see if we got the color we want on them, all right? Cool. Okay, guys, we're coming up on the last few minutes of this whole process, and I've got a lot to do now. I'm gonna take the meat out of the uh, sous vide cooker here. I'm just gonna lay it here, cover it with some foil wrap, just to keep it warm. But then I'm gonna take all the juices and stuff out of the bag and dump it into this pot at which time I'm going to turn the heat on, I'm going to add a slurry, that's a combination of cornstarch and water. Um, I use a 2 to 1 ratio of water to cornstarch, so like 2 tablespoons of water to 1 tablespoon of cornstarch. And I'm going to mix that into the juices in the bag and then let that thicken up. Once that thickens up, I'm going to add another teaspoon of dill, a cup of sour cream, just mix it together and uh, let it kind of sit and heat up just a little bit and then we'll cut the meat serve it the vegetables should be done by that time so yeah dinner's just about ready let's get into finishing this dish up now you'll see too I got this uh, black cover on the uh, on the box here and what that did it's a, a thermal insulator Right. Let's see if I can do this to where you guys can see what I'm doing. Open this up. All right. Put the meat there. Cover it with the foil. That's just so it doesn't uh, cool off too much while I finish everything else up. Alright, so the rest of this juice I'm just going to pour right in there. Turn on the heat. Now this is my uh, slurry mix of the cornstarch and water. Just shaking it up just to combine it. Now, 
I'm gonna go ahead and add the uh, the dill. So the dill is in. All right, I can feel the uh, I can feel the sauce tightening up now from the cornstarch heating up. Okay, I'm starting to get some bubbling here, so it's coming up to a boil, so that's good. The dill's all getting captured inside of the sauce. You don't really see it floating on the top much. All right, now I'm going to kill the heat. I'm going to add one cup of sour cream could take a whisk, but I might actually do it. Just see if I can break up those uh, chunks of uh, the sour cream that are sitting in there. Yeah, like so there you go guys, there's my sauce. Right, so here's our meat. Now, when I cut this, Look at how pink that is. It's a nice medium rare. Alright, that's all the farther I'm going to cut. It. Okay, I'm going to grab one of these ones in the middle. Yeah, look at how pink that is. Wow. Look at that guys, that's just amazing, but of course how does it taste, you know, is it tough? Mm. <laughs> Juicy, tender, perfect. I actually can't wait now to dish up, get some of that sauce on it. Mm. This is awesome. All right, the vegetables are all roasted off. So dinner is served. Let's dish up. Nice little fan on the plate right there. Grab a bit of sauce. And to top it off, I made some breadsticks. God, look at that, guys. Isn't that good? Let's go eat. I tell you guys, that looks awfully good. All right. Of course, I've already sampled the meat, but I haven't sampled it with the sauce. So let me grab a bit of a piece here. A little sauce on it. Mm. That dill is so nice on beef. Yeah. Mm. But the tenderness, I can't believe it. I can now cook a tough cut of meat, like a roast, and have it steak tender. Wow. 
I'm never going to do this in the slow cooker again. It's a fine way of doing it, but sometimes you just don't know how it's going to turn out. I've had it turn out really good and really juicy. And other times it's dry and stuff. You know, it's just meh. All right, let's try some veggies. Relegar uh, red potato. Mm -hmm. With a carrot. And sweet potato. Yep, that's pretty good. May could have gone a little bit heavier on the salt. Jen's not here, so I could have gotten away with it, but still pretty good. I, I do like that, um, uh, she calls it new bay seasoning instead of old bay. You know, we can make our own. And it's low sodium, so that's really good. All right, let's actually try some of it with the pot roast. Mm. <laughs> That's really good. You guys have got to try this. If you haven't gotten an immersion, cook it on low for like seven to nine hours in a crock pot. Take out the meat, pour the sauce into a saucepan just like what we did at the end here. Mix in the cornstarch and the extra dill. Bring it to a boil, add your sour cream, and you're done. Mmm. This is really good. All right, guys, thanks again for watching that. We'll see you on the road.